Thank you, mom, for being my rock, my inspiration, and my guiding light. Your love has been the anchor that keeps me grounded and the wings that help me soar. I am who I am today, achieving my dreams because of you. Your love and support are the reasons I can face any challenges with confidence. This is the post that Amna Arif shared with her soul sisters about a year ago, sharing her aspirations, her dreams with them, and also thanking her mother for everything that she had done for her. But unfortunately, she's no longer with us. She, she became a victim of a ruthless hit and run accident, which killed not only her, but her father early last week. Now her soul sisters are trying to keep her dreams alive. They're trying to tell her story to the world and trying to make sure that she and her family gets justice for the wrongs that had been done to them. Soul Sisters has be is be fast becoming an international phenomena, a platform that is giving voice to women, that is empowering women, that is providing as a resource for women in foreign lands, unempowered women, underprivileged women, and I have with me today a trailblazer who is actually a founder and co-president and president of Soul Sisters of USA, Sidra Jamil. Welcome, Sidra. Nice to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the lovely introduction. I so appreciate it. Um, my deepest... I haven't finished yet. So Sidra is actually wears a lot of hats. She originally comes from Pakistan. She uh, did her bachelor's and her master's from Pakistan, but then went on to get another master's and MBA from Stern University, New York. She is currently, like I said, president and founder of Soul Sisters of United States of America, which is a group that has over 34K members. So it has a huge following. She also sits on the boards of a nonprofit uh, based in New Jersey, which is called Women to Women Forum. And not only that, but she's also the program director of their flagship project, which is called Shazori House. That's that's a lot, Sidra. You've accomplished a lot. I don't think so. However, I truly appreciate and I'm humbled yeah. by, um, by your uh, by you giving insight to our viewers. Thank you very much again, Amina, for having me. And uh, I, my I actually wanted to talk about since you know, I, unfortunately, the um, the event that uh, recently happened and your involvement in Soul Sisters and actually founding uh, a big branch of Soul Sisters in USA. I'd like to know. Uh, more about this platform? What's the inspiration behind it? What's the ideology of Soul Sisters? I would like to offer my deepest sympathies and condolences to the family of the girl who passed away. And I am sure there are many more out there who are trying their best to live their dreams. Um, thankfully, Soul Sisters does provide us a platform where we are together as a family and we share our inspirations, we share our dreams, we offer help to people who are trying to navigate lives in foreign lands, for instance, like um, somebody like myself. When I came here 12 years ago, I honestly did not even know which side of the platform of the train platform to get off on. And my journey starts from there. And it's like, it's resonating with a lot of other women and their journeys as they move from 7,000 miles away from their parents, their relatives, their loved ones, seeking a journey and seeking a future here in the land of opportunities here in the United States. What inspired me to create this platform was the mere fact that I felt um, utterly alone. And I knew that I was not the only one. I knew that there were other women out there who just wanted somebody to connect with, somebody to speak to or speak their mind to, and somebody to give them that push when they needed one. Because the support that we have back home, the support of our parents, of our loved ones, is beyond comprehension. It's not just for their physical presence. It is them being there in the moment, it is them cheering on us. It is them opening doors for us. It is them giving us a warm meal when we need one. It is them keeping an eye on our kids when we're outside, maybe at work, maybe going in 
to like give a job interview or maybe stepping out to help somebody in need, somebody who has been through similar predicaments and we want to just, you know, soften the blow for them. Having said that, uh, I initiated the Soul Sisters platform over here in the United States. And uh, before I could even get grips on it, we grew to be about 8,000 members in the very first few months. So that was an astonishing um, growth, I would say, which was it, nothing but organic. I never had to like go out of my way to like pay money to market the platform on social media or any other media for that matter. Thankfully, there was there was presence and there was clearly a need where the community felt like they could come together as one family and be there to support each other. Yeah, so you clearly saw a huge need. Like as soon as you opened that, provided them with that outlet, people were just like, yeah. it almost seemed like people were waiting for that. You know, they needed they needed a shoulder maybe to cry on or just to bounce ideas off of someone. Or, you know, like you said, maybe someone just needed to know what kind, what side of the platform to get off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. There, are, there are too many things out here, especially like people who are always looking into you know, maybe exploring new job opportunities right. and uh, moving to a different state or chi finding childcare coverage if they're moving to a different I've, state. I've even see, uh, seen people seeking <laughs> almost marriage counseling and relationship yeah. advice and all kind of, you know, whatever women are going through at that, at that point. Um, the sun, you name it. You yeah. name it. It is, it is. It is actually providing a very um, wholesome um, help to, to women for uh, in foreign lands. So the other thing that I wanted to uh, touch on a little bit was that is it also does it also serve as an advocacy uh, platform for women? Like for example, if we go back to the unfortunate story of the girl in Pakistan, um, now I, I I've seen sisters from that platform advocating her cause, asking for justice. Is that something that's that's that happens pretty frequently? Yes. So I would like to say we do offer support given that uh, an unfortunate incident happened where people of power had the influence over such an incident where they're trying to shush away the people who are actually responsible for this unfor unforeseen event and unfortunate event this could have been this could have not happened had the person not been recklessly driving and the mere fact that this has happened and the person who is actually responsible um, is uh, pulling strings to kind of get away with uh, right. the murder. So the mere fact that we are stemming from a place of a place of um, a, we are stemming all this is stemming from a place where where there is nothing you can do to solace the family, nothing you can do to give comfort, and there is no bringing back the dead. Of course, there is no system in place to bring justice and especially with what's happening in Pakistan like I said the girl is the the lady driver who um ran over the girl and her father unfortunately in this case is um still at bay and we're hoping that justice is served so that is certainly something that we that we would like to speak more about and we would like to advocate however I do feel it's imperative to say that we are not a social, uh, I'm sorry, we are not a political platform. And, and we would like to offer empathy where it's needed. And in this case, it is much needed to not just the girl and her family, but to also similar women in similar predicaments yes. where, where they're stepping out of the comforts of their home, the comforts of their father's home, or their 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 husband's home, to go make a living for themselves, to go make a life for themselves and their their kids and their their future generations. And there there are criminals at bay, at large, where there is, and they know that there is there is no accountability for their actions, and voicing such concerns i would say like like how i read the post that gibran nasser made i think it's imperative he's one of the few lawyers that i have immense respect for in pakistan that advocate for such rights that advocate for people who are coming from uh, unfortunate circumstances 
So I would say that, yes, definitely, this is something that uh, we have spoken about and we would like to um, offer, again, our deepest condolences and sympathies to their, the family that has gone through this. Um, I know you alluded to it a little bit um, earlier on in the discussion. What was the inspiration behind this? Did you come across a lot of women who you saw were looking for help and they didn't have anywhere to turn to? Is that what was the driver? Or was there a personal inspiration or a personal story behind this, behind founding this platform? I would say a bit of both. Um, going through life merely just just going through life I would say you know uh, having uh, lost my son to the terrible like almost 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 like like I said only people in power pull the reins and they get to get away with uh, whatever their wrongdoings are and people like us like my father he was a renowned physician um in Pakistan yet being um yet being a person of influence he still couldn't come to grips as to asking other people for favors when I was a young mother at 21 years of age and my uh, prior spouse chose to take my son away from me when he clearly was not involved in his life only because I chose to marry somebody here in the United States and he thought uh, that he you know he could control my life by taking away or clearly snatching away my child and then taking you know taking us to courts and then never showing up to the to any of the court hearings and here I was with my parents always showing up to court hoping something would transpire out of it only to realize that everybody is sold and there is a price tag to that court case and to that court system and even to that judge for that matter and same goes to uh, reconnect. I would I would like to reconnect to this yeah. when that happened. Like the criminal is oh, still similarities, yeah. So yes, there clearly is um, a lot of I would say personal turmoil in my own heart, where I would never want somebody else to go through that, and I would like for them to know that there is another sister out there who's been through. Um, her fair share, I would say, that's what God had destined for me. But then when I came here, I could sense that uh, there were people who were like me and in the same boat as me who always were seeking resources and there wasn't uh, many to, you know, connect to. And there were bars, they were widespread. They were not um, readily at their disposal, whereas... Thankfully, the power of social media has been such that it allows us to connect to people much, much more in, in a much more convenient fashion than than it was like 20 years ago. So why not take advantage of what we have at hand and why not create a platform that would allow us to bring our sisters together and bring our brothers together? And like I always say and like I always insist and like I always um, always, always bring this in any of the. Um, my opportunities where I can connect to the to the to the general masses that men are our biggest allies. We form a community when we come together as women and men and as families. I myself with my clan of sisters cannot build a community. You as a brother and your clan of brothers cannot bring build a community. So we build a community when we come together right. as women and men. Um with all due respect to uh, you know other genders, and I I just I just feel it's it's imperative to to say that uh, men are our biggest allies, and it's always good to work together. Certainly, and you have also been involved in a lot of women empowerment efforts, Women to Women Forum that you say uh, that you're a board member of, being one of them. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, absolutely. It is a project that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, all thanks to Nusrat Sohail, who is the founder and president of Women to Women Forum. She, I felt, has always uh, given me that faith to continue to believe in myself. Something that I uh, always, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful journey that myself and her share. 
and um, I've known her for a little over six, seven years now, and it allows me to, to you know, practice what I preach. And uh, she involved me uh, with the Shezori House project many, many years ago when this was still in the works. Um, thankfully, I was uh, honored to join their board this January. As soon as I completed my uh, Stern credentials, I graduated in December. And then January, I started off with uh, Woman to Woman on their board. Shenzori House is a project that uh, we've been speaking about for the last few years. I was able to um, host their uh, their flagship uh, program and their flagship fundraiser this year in March. And thankfully, with my own circle of influence, I was able to generate a little over $20,000 from my table. Um, but thankfully, we were also able to generate enough funds for us to suffice for the year for this project. Um, Shezori House is a women's transitional housing facility. And given the mere fact that there are a bunch of unfortunate um, and unforeseen circumstances that women in foreign lands have to navigate, given um, given your families and uh, given families and kids being involved, there are times when there are domestic violence situations, and that um, kind of put our women out there and they have no option but to but they're asked to leave the household or they don't have anywhere to go and that is when we come into play um allowing women to practice the religion freely and access to a halal kitchen is what we proudly boast Shezori House is a beautiful project in itself. I always encourage people to connect with me and I would be happy to give them a tour of the facility just so they can see the warmth that we are offering and the care that we like to present to our uh, residents. That, that sounds like a great project and I'm sure there's a great need for that, especially in a foreign land like US where there's not a lot of support out there. Women find it hard to navigate life in general over here. Um, I would like you to finish off by telling us an, a, a story that has stayed with you of, a, of someone that you've met, so someone you've helped. Someone that, something that just st stayed with you. Hmm. Maybe a, a, a resident of the Shizori house that you helped and is, has now gone on to be an independent person. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, not one story. There are many, many That's stories. There are, yeah. Many, many stories, alhamdulillah. So um, thankfully we've been able to empower women enough for them to be able to go spread their wings and fly their merry way. Um, what sticks to me is the resilience, I would say, and the courage that we try to instill in them. And it needs to be done every single day. Sometimes for us as um as caretakers, I would say. It puts a lot of responsibility at, on us as we ourselves are juggling with our lives, our responsibilities, our kids. I have a job I, I was I, that I am currently at and things that I have to manage during my life and to make sure that I you know go about my day. And then I have a whole home that that I know would need me. So that allows my heart to feel that, hey, there are people who are looking up to you. And that just uh, that just doesn't give me enough zeal to zeal and passion to finish off with what I am doing. It it takes up my energy. It it brings me to 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 feel that um there are people who are looking up to me. And when I go there, I am welcomed with the same warmth. I am asked questions that have been on their minds to help them facilitate in their journey 
for instance, if somebody wants to, you know, take up a course or if somebody wants to get their admissions to maybe their school district facilitated and things of that nature. So not one story to particularly point out. Um, also, not much of a liberty here to speak. Yeah. Correct. Uh, I'm sure you you also understand but uh, there have been times when we have had families moving from Connecticut or from other different states that we have hosted and their kids needed to attend school young kids needed care young young kids needed school supplies so all that little running around along with Ms. Ratafi it's been it's been nothing but um given me immense solace in knowing that we're doing something that's uh, that's 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 for a good cause and that can have longevity and and help in keeping our families together and helping bringing our muslim community together thank you sidra for all that you do for touching so many lives for helping women tons and tons of women your membership is already 34k so and it's my team it's, it's yeah Oh, it's right. but it's, it's the ideology. Yeah, it's the ideology that is helping knowing that there is someone out there who's ready to listen. They have a shoulder to cry on. I'm sure that means a lot to a lot of women out here. Thank Absolutely. you for everything that you do. Thank you.